Okay. So this is an experiment. I don't know what's going to happen. I haven't done this yet. Or right, Eric, this is for you. I know you're not listening. But... Okay. So question is, why does water stick fall off a ball? And I proved that it doesn't fall off the ball. And he said, I'm not talking about a little water. Do it for a minute. See if there's any water on there. I think that's a good idea. Got a water. Got a ball dipped in the water. Most of it has already fallen off due to gravity being stronger. Think about that. Gravity being stronger than the water adhesion, than the covalent bond adhesion, as it were. So now he said, do it for a minute. And I'm at 46 seconds. So let's go. So here's the thing. As this spins, you have centripetal and centripetal forces acting on the ball. Crazy is if you were to slow this down, you would see the ball stretching and condensing right here around where it spins. What's amazing is this force is not just on small things like the ball. The Earth itself, a sphere, bulges at the equator from this exact same force. And it's actually one of the ways we can tell where the actual equator is. Is where on these forces, because if it's bulging here, that means that the axis is here. So, another amazing thing is that the water on the ball right now, if I can keep this steady, which is, I can't, but that's better for, for, for Eric, for those who disbelieve. Um, the water on the ball stop caring about moving, okay, as much, because there's no more acceleration, they're going the same speed. However, it will always want to go in a straight line, which is what creates it to fly off the ball to begin with. And so, you can also see it wobbles on its axis. Guess what also wobbles on its axis? The Earth. Now, what time are we here? All right, coming on. Oh, I think that was, yeah, that was way past a minute. Way past a minute. Okay, so I gave you longer than a minute. And so now, here's the experiment. I want to make it clear. I'm holding the ball so you don't see. This is a completely clean, Let's see if I can get that. You should be able to get that. Completely clean, completely dry napkin. I wouldn't lie to you. Here you go, just in case. There's no watermarks on the ball. So now I'm going to take this and put it around the ball. Look at that. Look. Look. Not just a little water, Eric. It's after a minute. See it? It's soaking wet. You can see through it. It's soaking wet. Soaking wet, not just a minute. Now watch. Just putting on the ball it is now completely soaked to the point of, I bet. Come on. Come on, Eric. You asked four times. You gave, you gave me what to do. You gave me what to do. I rotated it. Still, lots and lots of water. I proved it again. I don't know what you want. Now, here's the thing. Eric, I get it. So everyone knows, Eric doesn't care. Okay? Eric doesn't care. This is not for Eric. It's for anybody who might be on this thread, who might be like, well, maybe Eric's right. Ball doesn't stick to Water doesn't stick to a ball. Go do it yourself. Learn. Now, it's still a little bit of water. A little bit of water. You're saying it's oceans, but no. Go look it up. Even if you believe in the flat earth theory, even with Eric's theory, the sizes of the masses don't change. The size of the ocean, the size of the continents of Africa and Asia don't change. Those are still big. Okay? Even flat earth, if you were to compress this out to the flat earth of equal size of the earth, of the flat earth theory, it's still 190 million times the surface area of this. 190 million. Go look it up. Go look it up. 
It's just measurements. It's just meters and stuff, how long it takes to get to places. Even with flat Earth, 109 million times. What does that mean? That means that if it's 190 million times, then one millimeter on here, one little bitty millimeter, a millimeter, go look up a little millimeter, one millimeter of water would be the deeper, twice as deep as any point in the ocean and would be the depth, one millimeter, less than one millimeter actually, if you actually do the math. Well, one millimeter, if you were, this is the size of the earth, one millimeter would be greater than the distance from the Marianas Trench, the lowest port on the ocean, to the highest peak on Earth. I don't think it's actually Mount, Mount Everest, but Mount Everest is the highest a mountain or something like that. But it doesn't matter. The highest peak to the lowest point of the ocean. Go look that up. Divided by 190 million, less than a millimeter. Closer to a micron. So the water left on this ball is almost certainly, is provably more than the water on the earth if this ball, if the earth were the size of this ball. There would be less water than is left on this ball, as I just proved. Again, I know, Eric, you don't care. You didn't even, weren't even here to learn. You just want to put stuff out there because you don't care. You made up your mind. But there's people who didn't go out there and learn. People go out there and experiment. It's what science spirits are about. Send up a weather balloon filled with helium. All that's cheap with a GoPro and a GPS so you can recover it. And, and look at the curvature of the Earth. Lots of students do that every year. Lots and lots and lots, lots of people do that to try. Go buy a telescope. Go buy a star map and figure out, well, is the star map right? And then look at all the star maps and see, well, this star map relies on the Earth being a sphere. So how can I know that that star is going to be there? I can point to the exact place and it will be there according to star maps. But then I can really look more into it and see that the star maps are reliant on a spherical rock. Anyways, this is getting long. Uh, hope you enjoyed yourself. Eric, proved you wrong again. Don't know what to tell you. Have a nice one.